Hi again, I'm Andy Millard, and this is TFAC Talks, presented by the Tryon Fine Arts Center, where we talk with area artists and learn about their lives and work. Today, we have an amazing couple I'm really excited about. Pam Stone is a comedian, actress, and writer. She's best known for co-starring seven seasons on the hit sitcom Coach. She promised herself to leave Hollywood before she turned 14, and she kept that promise. 14? Did I say 14? 40. That's what I said. <laughs> I, didn't, I couldn't drive. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't ride her truck at 14. What are you talking about? Well, that's the reason we came here, because in South Carolina, she's legal. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. <laughs> so you see what we're in for here. Uh, we are so lucky to have her here Research, in the Carolina Millard. Foothills. Research. Research. I you heard me wrong, I'm sure. Uh, it would take a very long introduction to do her justice, but she is our big local celebrity and we love her dearly. And speaking of celebrities, Pam's partner is an absolutely amazing guy in his own right. Paul Zimmerman is an internationally renowned expert on roses and the force behind Paul Zimmerman Roses. He has a background in show business as well. He's a trained clown. He was head writer on an ABC television show. You can tell this is a power couple if ever well, the, there was The man one. can't keep a job. That's the problem. <laughs> well, that's something I want to talk to you guys about. How are you doing right now? Are you, you look like you're doing pretty good over there. Um, uh, we're doing flawlessly. Uh, I mean, as far as... Uh, I mean, for me, um, you know, I, I, I do the horse thing. I'm a dressage trainer and I, and I've actually never been busier. The, the stand-up comedy, the corporate work I do, the, the, the columns, the, the, even the radio show that I did, that's all to pay the horse bills. So, uh, interestingly with, um, uh, you know, 95% of my attention is taken up with, uh, doing the horse thing. So right now, um, I, I, I don't know how it happened, but I have more clients than I've ever had. So everything hmm. is everything's peachy keen. Well, great. Yeah. Hey, Paul, how's everything peachy keen for you? Yeah, I mean, our life hasn't changed much. I mean, I work from home, so that, that hasn't, you know, so <laughs> it's like, oh, gosh, I, I have to stay before. home. <laughs> yeah, I never, I work from home. And, um, you know, right, my main thing right now is an is, uh, independent consultant with Jackson Perkins. I also do online remote garden design. So that hasn't changed. The speaking engagements are gone. And obviously, we're not doing the UK garden tour this right. year or something like that. But you know, I'm enjoying my garden and, and getting lots of projects. I got half the deck torn up behind us. Uh, so I'm getting lots of projects done. And, and as Pam said, a little light roofing on the side. Beautiful. So I have a, I have, this is an important question. Uh, which one of you is the boss in this relationship? Oh, that's over. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, 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 you know, <laughs> I had to be safe there, Andy. Um, no, I think it's equal, really. It depends on what area we're talking about, you know? I mean, we, we you know, I do the cooking and, and, and that kind of stuff and the grocery shopping because Pam doesn't like to. And generally the outdoors is my domain. And then, you know, Pam's got more talent when it comes to like, you know, design inside. The horses are obviously her domain. <laughs> what the hell is you it design inside? Well, yeah, paint like, colors. <laughs> yeah, like when it's painted every 20 years. Yeah, I know. But, yeah, no, but every 20 years, you rise to the occasion. I rise to the occasion. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's like uh, I, I, I tend to, to clean out the cat box more. Uh, uh, we got a uh, Roomba thing, a, a D-Bot, so uh, the, the household chores are pretty even now because that does the vacuuming. When you have, you know, a plethora of animals in the house, uh, I'm, I'm careful not to pick arguments anytime close to dinner because I don't want to piss them off so I don't get fed. <laughs> but but uh, prior to that, you know. It seems to me that each of you has a, a great passion in something that you do for for Paul, for you, it's roses. And I mean, it's clear what an amazing passion you have for that. And for you, Pam, it's it's the horses. Mm -hmm. so, well, uh, I, that, I think that's one of the keys as well, is that, you know, we both have things that we love to do that we're passionate about. And, and they're, you know, I mean, they're related in the sense that the horse poop is great for the garden. So there is a connection there. Um, but, you know, I think that helps a lot. I mean, Pam can do her thing and I can do my thing. And, and you know, we're not, you know, I'm not sitting around and, and you know, I think that helps a lot. 
No, I think that's I think that's about right. I think if you're if especially when you've been together as long as we have, if you're if you're looking for another person to to make you happy in your life in a relationship, that's just not a great way to go. I mean, you have to be you have to uh, have your own happiness, enjoy your own time doing your own thing on your own, unless you happen to have, you know, had, had Paul met a Rosarian, a female Rosarian, although back then Paul wasn't a Rosarian, but had I, had I met a, uh, you know, a guy that was doing horses or something, yeah, you might have that in common. You also might kill each other, uh, you know, at the same time <laughs> arguing that. But I do think, I think Paul's right with that. It's, it's very, very healthy to have your own thing to do. And then at the end of the day, you have something to talk about. Yeah. You know, it, it, unless you're depending yeah. on a, you know, somebody says, I just want to be in a relationship. I want to be happy. Well, that's, that's kind of like a recipe for d disaster, I think. I think you need to find your own way, your own happiness, and then bring that back in. Well, it's at least that's, that's what I'm going for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it seems to me, Pam, that you have in particular, um, I, this may not be the best way to put it, but maybe a short attention span uh, because you, oh, yeah. You, are into you are doing so many things you just got finished writing a novel you write your articles uh your columns uh i believe you are you um syndicated with those yeah yeah and i think uh there's regionally syndicated like in 10 papers um something like that which is good but something that you need to realize about me and paul will say this to anybody um that he meets is is yeah i i wrote the novel uh i just had that idea for a long time but i I don't do, I, I, when I do something major, like write a novel, it's, it's to buy another horse. It's, it's not about, it's not about <laughs> releasing, you know, writing the great American novel. It's something I knocked out in eight weeks to be a chick's beach read. It ended up being a bit more successful than that, which has been great. I mean, it was nominated for the Southern Book Prize, which just blew me freaking away. I, I wasn't even aware. Somebody showed this to me, said, did you know that you finished fourth? And I said, I had no idea. Oh, nice. What a, what a pleasant surprise. But the, you know, writing for me and doing comedy is like breathing. It is the easiest, easiest thing on the planet. I, I don't spend more than 10 minutes writing a column. It just comes. I mean, you know, you have to mm. come up with the idea and then you just kind of blah it out on the keyboard. Uh, Stand-up comedy is very easy for me. And so that's, it's, it's, uh, I, that's just my day job sometimes. And I'm really, really lucky that I have that as a day job because it's easy for me and I enjoy it. It's better than like commuting or anything like that. <laughs> Plus the, the best part about it is I don't have to wear a bra. <laughs> you know, when you're not going to the office and, and it's like, especially being on lockdown quarantine, I ain't wearing a bra. I haven't worn makeup and a bra in like since January. So, well, yeah, that's why I say it's going to, this virus is making us, uh, is, we're going to come out of this a better people, an uglier people, <laughs> but a better people. Uh, Paul. <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure how to, how to transition. Welcome to my world, Andy. <laughs> He's not wearing pants. Yeah, I'm not wearing. Yeah, I'm not wearing underwear. Has. So Pam doesn't have a bra, and I don't have any underwear. Okay. Right. So, you know, so I, I was. I was going to ask about um, your Dutch heritage and your mother uh, having uh, lived in a, a concentration camp, I guess. And then coming to America and your background as a first generation American. Yeah. So what happened was, um, so my mom was born in 1921 and with, there was a twin sister and there's two brothers. And my grandfather was a, an admiral in the Dutch Navy and Indonesia at the time was a Dutch colony. So he was sent to Indonesia to command the Dutch fleet in Indonesia right before World War II. The Japanese invaded. He got out with the fleet, but my grandmother and their, the four children, including my mom, spent the entire World War II in a Japanese concentration camp. And I guess the reason I bring that up is, I mean, to be in the life that you are in now, from that kind of a beginning, and just your mother's generation before that, uh, in the background that she grew up in, I mean, do you ever give that any thought? Yeah, I mean, it does. Well, Pam's first generation American as well. Her mother was actually in the Blitz in London during World War II. What? Um, which is, yeah, I mean, we're both first generation American, and that's actually something we both have in common. And that's, that's there's, there's little unspoken things in our relationship, like a cup of tea or certain big holidays that we like mm -hmm, to do or mm -hmm. TV shows that we like to watch that mm -hmm. because of that mutual background, both being raised in basically European households, um, we have that in common. But for my mom, you know, I mean, the best example I can give of my mom is that, you know, so she was, 
she was trained as a secretary in five languages, um, including shorthand, uh, Dutch, English, German, French, and Indo Malaysian, Indonesian. And when she got out of the camp, she could have gone back to Holland with my grandfather, who at that point was commander of the Dutch fleet, and been the admiral's daughter and been his secretary, worked in, the, in whatever the case was. And she decided at the age of, let's see, she would have been 24 then, um, decided that's not what she wanted to do. She didn't want to be the admiral's daughter. So what she wanted to do, so she basically ended up getting a job through my grandfather at the Dutch embassy in Washington, D.C. And at the age of 24, single after World War II, being in a concentration camp, got on a military transport plane and flew like some 36 hours to Washington, D.C., didn't know a soul, didn't have an apartment. She only had a job. That's all she had. Landed in D.C., got a job. She, she translated the Marshall Plan. Um, you know, so, so that's, that is my background because I think, you know, my mom could do anything. So, so why can't I? <laughs> that, that's a book. I mean, one of you guys need to write that book. I mean, it's an incredible story. And, um, and I, I was honored to have known your mother. She was just the most delightful, wonderful person uh, anyone could possibly. Well, she adored you. Well, that, that was very nice of her. Um, so I think we've pretty much run out of time here, which takes no time <laughs> with talking to people like you. And I wanted to just thank you so much. Do you have anything that you want to uh, share with um, anyone who's watching now? Uh, wear your mask. Wear your mask. Wear your damn mask. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't be coming far far unless you got a mask on. Very good. Well, thank you both. Uh, I cannot thank you guys enough. You are more than welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, our pleasure. Sorry, I couldn't put on a bra. Well, we will. Uh, <laughs> we will stop skip it. that part. <laughs> so, uh, to learn more about Pam Stone. Check out her website at, at comedianpamstone.com. You never would know that she was a comedian, would you? Uh, and check out Paul Zimmerman at paulzimmermanroses.com. And as always, you can see what we're up to at the Tryon Fine Arts Center by visiting tryonarts.org. Thank you so much for watching this edition of TFAC Talks. Stay safe. Let's get through this together. And for everyone at the Tryon Fine Arts Center, I'm Andy Millard. We'll see you next time. Thank you.